The housing market just took a big hit. Today, we're going to do a deep dive analysis of the home values that exist within the Florida housing market from peak to trough. We're also going to cover some of the major housing markets within the country so that you know exactly what's going on and have the best information to make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. If you're a returning viewer, I appreciate your participation in our journey. Now, this video is sponsored by FAU Henderson University, and we're gonna get into it right now. If you've been watching for a while, you know that I've been sharing the housing market data that exists within the state of Florida. And I've shared exactly how far off demand has dropped in the recent past how much sales have dropped due to the fact that mortgage interest rates are skyrocketing. And in each market that I've covered, the trends remain basically the same. Sales have dropped tremendously over the last few months, and they will continue to do so as interest rates continue to go higher. And to be fully transparent, the housing market data that I will share is going to be different from the hyperlocal market that you're shopping in. So it's critical to know what the hyperlocal market is when you're thinking about buying or selling. Now, if you are looking for a referral in a market that I don't cover, please reach out because we will connect you with someone that we know, like, and trust, an all-star that can negotiate you the best deal, irrespective of market conditions. But let's get right into it. So Fortune Magazine, Fortune.com put out an article by Lance Lambert on Saturday titled, The U.S. Housing Market Just Took Another Hit. Back in early February, Minneapolis Fed president went on CNBC to make it clear that loosening financial conditions, including mortgage rates, which had slipped at the time to 6.09%, could interfere with the Fed's inflation fight if it saw the economy warm up. And then he went on to say that the housing market is starting to show signs of life again because mortgage rates have come back down. Well, thanks for the newsflash. When interest rates go down, what happens? More buyers appear. And if more buyers appear, well, then more transactions happen. And so I don't need to be a Fed president or a rocket scientist to understand that. In the days following that interview, financial markets tightened back. The average 30-year fixed rate shot back up to 6.97%. Now, to be clear, 6.97%, 7%, is what you get if you've got perfect credit. If you don't have perfect credit, you're probably paying something closer to eight or 9%, depending on where you're at. And I've been on the record for a while now talking about the fact that I expect interest rates to go significantly higher and go back to the historical norm of what they used to look like when they traded between nine and 10%. So it will not surprise me at all if we're looking at a 10% interest rate at some point in the near future. But let's get back into it. So mortgage interest rates shot back up to 6.97% as of Friday, as investors realize that improved economic data means the Fed will likely hold the federal funds rate higher for longer than previously expected. And as mortgage rates have skyrocketed, what could you expect also happened? Applications for mortgages have fallen dramatically. In fact, the Mortgage Purchase Application Index dropped to its lowest reading since 1995, which is not a surprise to me. When interest rates go higher, and what the consumer's financial obligation becomes as interest rates go higher is not going to be tenable for most home buyers. Most people are completely priced out of homes when their home payment doubles. And that's basically what's happened over the last year. And Joel Kahn, the deputy chief economist at the Mortgage Bankers Association earlier this week said that the data on inflation, employment, and economic activity have signaled that inflation may not be cooling as quickly as anticipated, which continues to put upward pressure on rates. Well, I've been talking about inflation being through the roof for a long time. And I've also talked about the fact that the real number for inflation is completely understated in almost every 
data point that I see. The inflation number that they're sharing is simply not accurate. And the Fed is going to have to take drastic action, period. End of story. And the economic shock from this latest mortgage rate jump means the U.S. housing market slump is very likely to continue and could even deepen, risking pushing the U.S. economy into a recession. If you've been watching for a while, you know I've been sharing this exact same thing for a long time. Historically speaking, the economic impact from the Fed's inflation fighting always hits housing first. And I disagree with that completely because the Fed's fighting inflation does not hit housing values first. It actually hits them last. It's the lagging thing that happens when the Fed makes changes. But the consumer facing part of that, the consumer's purchasing power absolutely takes a hit almost instantaneously. And that's what we're seeing. And we've seen sales drop across the board in every market. But to be totally transparent, each market is going to trade differently. And I've shared in the past that there are plenty of markets out there that are getting shellacked right now. And so far in my hyper local market, that simply has not been the case. But that doesn't mean it'll stay that way forever. But rising mortgage interest rates and the threat of unemployment and the pain of recession and inflation going out of control absolutely will impact everybody to different degrees and it will certainly impact different markets in different ways but for now let's do a high level overview of what some of these markets look like let's look at the home value index by county in january 2023 and so i'm going to start with some of the major metros that are out there in the country to show what the peak to trough values are and then from there we'll talk about what it looks like in florida let's start in the northeast let's start in nassau county and specifically we're talking about new york newark and jersey city and what you can see is there's been a major uptick since pre-pandemic numbers, which is what I suspect you're going to see in many markets within Florida. But we're going to cover Los Angeles. We're going to cover Boise. We're going to cover Austin, all of which have skyrocketed since the pandemic. But as you can see, peak to trough, the increase of home values is $3,865. And you can also see there's been an uptick in home values going back to June. But as far as pre-pandemic appreciation is concerned, and you can see a major uptick from pre-pandemic years. 2019, we're talking about 25 plus percent. And January 2018, we're talking about 31 and a half percent. Major uptick in home values which is now returning to normal, which is returning to single digit growth. And in this case, it's actually less than single digit growth. So essentially trading flat, but still a massive uptick from pre-pandemic numbers. Now let's stay on the East Coast before we go to the West. And from there, let's go and see what Washington, Arlington, Alexandria markets look like. Let's see what Stafford County looks like because this is a different market and the results are different too. And what you can see is peak to trough, there's been a decrease of 2.14% a touch over 10 grand. The last year has been no bueno. And what you can see is single digit depreciation. You can see a downtick of 2%. And that holds true going back to June. But relative to pre-pandemic numbers in 2019 and 2018, you can see a massive uptick of 31.43% and 34.59. So there's been a massive increase since the pandemic, but we're starting to see things roll the opposite way. We're starting to see depreciation. And as of right now, I suspect there's a ton of homeowners that have a lot of equity in which they can capitalize on for now. But what does the future hold? Yet to be determined. But I can tell you for certain that 7% interest rates are no bueno for anybody, especially those folks that live in Austin, Texas. And Austin, Texas has been in fuego for the last few years. But as you can see on this chart, Travis County, which is Austin, Round Rock, Georgetown, Texas, 
has gotten a beating down 7%, 7.5% seven peak to trough, down $44,000. Well, that's no bueno if you're thinking about selling and it's muy bueno if you're thinking about buying. But you can see the trend is negative for the last year. But relative to pre-pandemic, massive, massive appreciation. So 2019, 54%, January of 2018, 60%, almost 61%. So depending on when you bought, it's very likely you've got a tremendous amount of equity within your home, at least as of right now. What does the future hold? Yet to be determined, but the trend here, but the trend here is no bueno. It's not your friend if you're thinking about selling. And it's certainly your friend if you're thinking about buying. And keep in mind, I'm going to do a deep dive into Florida very soon. So please keep watching. All right, let's move to Boise. And Boise, Idaho has been completely on fire since the pandemic, since people could relocate and work remotely from anywhere. And Boise had a massive uptick since the pandemic. As you can see, pre-pandemic numbers, January 2019 up 45%, from January 2018 up 64%. But peak to trough, it's down almost 41,000. So the last year, as far as home values are concerned, has been no bueno in Boise. And now let's check out Los Angeles before we get into Florida, because Los Angeles, California has been in fuego. And I'm not going to break down the whole state because we'll be here all day. But the trend here is not your friend if you're thinking about selling. And it's certainly your friend if you're thinking about buying. But what you can see is a 2% or a 2.5% reduction from peak to trough, down 21,000 and change. And you're starting to see single digit depreciation in this market of Los Angeles County. So homeowners that are sitting on a lot of equity are taking it right on the chin to the tune of two and a half percent. But relative to pre-pandemic numbers, they are sitting on a tremendous amount of equity depending on when they purchase their home. So from January 2019 pre-pandemic, there's been an uptick of 31% in home values. From January 2018, an uptick of 50%, massive uptick in equity for most homeowners that are in this county. But the trend here is on the downtick and very much not your friend if you're thinking about selling, especially with interest rates going past 7%. If you're thinking about buying, I suspect there are deals to be had, which takes us to Florida, which is what everybody wants to know about to begin with. And we're going to start in Miami-Dade, Miami-Dade County. So we're talking about Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Pompano Beach. And what you can see is what I've been sharing all along single digit appreciation, at least as of January, 2023. And to be totally transparent, these are big picture numbers and there's going to be different intensity of supply and demand, but 7% interest rates or higher is no bueno for buyers. Nonetheless, peak to trough has been an increase in this Miami-Dade County of 3.3% as of January, 2023. And we've seen an uptick of $16,000 and change. Relative to pre-pandemic, massive explosion. We've got an uptick of 55% in 19 and an uptick of 60, almost 66% in January 2018. But as you can see right now, the trend is single digit growth, which is what I've been talking about for a long time. What does the future hold? Yet to be determined. I don't know. I'll continue to share exactly what's happening in real time so that you've got the best information to make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. And we're getting closer to the market that I serve and support. But for now, we're going to review Broward County. And what you can see in Broward County as of January 2023 is single digit appreciation. You can see that peak to trough values have increased 12,000 and change, 2.59% to be exact, which is a massive uptick from 2019, 48, almost 49%. And relative to 2018, a bigger jump than that, up 57%. 
That is big time appreciation, which is not sustainable when interest rates are at 7%. But I know as a boots on the ground operator of a high performance real estate team, there is still an undersupply of homes in most of the hyper local markets that my buyers are shopping in. So the intensity of demand is going to change depending on where you're shopping. Which brings us to Palm Beach County, which happens to be the county in which I live. So let's look at what these numbers yield. And what you can see is peak to trough in January, 2023, it's been an increase of 0.18%. Now I can tell you for certain that this big picture number is not indicative of what's happening in the hyper local markets in which I service. But the trend is certainly not our friend. The trend is not our friend when interest rates are at 7%. But so far, it's still in the green, which is likely to change as the pain of recession continues to worsen. But for now, it is what it is. And peak to trough, it's been an increase of just under $1,000. But relative to pre-pandemic, back in January 2019, we've had an uptick of 56%. And relative to January 2018, we've had an uptick of 64%. Massive appreciation in Palm Beach County. And according to the Zillow data, which is what this map used to source the information, which I don't necessarily trust all the time to be totally transparent, but nonetheless, what you can see is we're getting back to a flat market where 0.18% appreciation is what we saw in January, which is absolutely not what we've seen in Boynton Beach or Boca Raton or Del Rey. But this is the big picture number and I want to share it with you so that you know what the trends are, so that you have all the information in order to make the best decisions for yourself, for your family and for your financial bottom line. Which brings us up a little bit more north to Martin County, the Port St. Lucie market, which I just did a video on and I've already shared these trends. But what you can see is we're in the red. Peak to trough is down three grand, a little bit more than that. And for the last three months, what you can see is a downtick in home values. But relative to pre-pandemic numbers, it's been a massive increase. 2019, 53%. January 2018, 61%. But in Martin County, the days of double-digit growth are over, and I suspect they'll be lucky to get single-digit growth. Yet to be determined, I don't know, and each market will trade differently, but this is the overall big picture, and I remain committed to telling you the truth. Now, I hope you found this content valuable, and if you did, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and check out my next video because I suspect you will love it a lot. And until next time,